welcome back to another episode of... This Way Find Out! Answering the world's toughest but simplest questions. For this segment of Fifth Grade Finds Out, we are going to make a countdown on five of the, some of the world's smartest animals. We are starting with the rat. The rat is a highly intelligent yet much abused animal in Western cultures. But in Chinese culture, the rat is known for resourcefulness and for really good reason. They colonized every continent except for Antarctica. The rat has also been used in research to create a lot of types of loopholes and escape routes while being studied by the top scientific minds of our time. Next up is our squid. Recognition shows to the invertebrate with the strength and skill to screw a lid off a jar. And our list is the octopus, one of the most smartest creatures of the sea. This animal is still poorly understood, but scientists are constantly discovering new and impressive abilities octopuses play, solve problems, navigate through mazes, and have a respectable short-term memories. Part of an octopus's is as large as some mammals' brains, but it displays high level of organization, which helps it catch its prey and avoid animals that want to eat it. However, its shape-shifting camouflage abilities reveal only a little bit of this amazing creature's brain power. Isn't it amazing? Next on our list is the elephant. Did you know that the elephant's brain is three times the size of a human's? They've also been known to clean their food and use tools in various ways in the wild. They can also follow human commands in captivity. Elephants can also show grief after losing a lost relative. It's pretty sad. Elephants can recognize themselves in a mirror, and elephants can also recognize over 30 relatives from their scent. We're almost done. Give it up for our dolphin. The dolphin is very smart. They even have their own language. Fun fact, the dolphins have a brain that is four to five times larger than expected from their body size. Like many of the most intelligent animals on Earth, dolphin females remain with their young for several years. Apparently, some Navy-trained dolphins are trained and smart enough to detect underwater explosives. They even have a sonar in their DNA. Like the elephant that we mentioned earlier, the dolphin can recognize itself in a mirror. Finally, last but most definitely not the least, the chimpanzee. The chimpanzee is one of the smartest animals we found in this countdown. A test involves a step-by-step process of making a spear to hunt. They have also been known to learn sign language and remember the signals and hand forms of a person's name that they haven't seen in years. Also like the elephant, it can recognize itself in a mirror and shows signs of caring and mourning. This concludes our segment of Fifth Grade Finds Out. How was Donald Duck made, and why was he mad? Donald Duck was the first introduced in the series The Wise Little Hen. The Wise Little Hen was made in 19... Donald Duck was originally called a goat because of the actor's voice, but then after they realized it sounded like a duck, they changed his character to Donald Duck. Donald's duck full name is actually Donald Full Trade Duck. Walt Disney took inspiration from an Australian cricket player, Donald Bradman. Disney wanted a character that was more negative than Mickey Mouse, so the bad-tempered duck was born in Nashville, the character from 1934 to 1983. Then they trained Tony Asolomo to take over. On the 9th, June 2014th, Donald Duck celebrated his 80th birthday. Donald Duck was created in 1934 by Walt Disney Productions. His birthday is recognized by his appearance. Now he is 86 years old, and yet he is still living. Later in the series of La- Wise Little Hen, it is revealed that Donald's anger is a result of fear that no one can understand. Though we, with the help of anger management, he was able to turn it into a product instinct. Why and how do we drink green 
Dreams are what you see and hear in your mind when you're asleep. They're like visions. They mostly happen during your last stage of sleep, your REM sleep. This stage is the lightest stage of sleep, and you can easily wake up from it. The amount of your life that you will spend dreaming will be on average six years. Some scientists believe that dreams have a meaning and give us a way to predict future occurrences. But, still some scientists see nightmares and dreams as random illogical information, or as a way for a human brain to release the stresses and doubts that they experience. Sometimes the dreamer experiences a lucid dream. This is where the dreamer realizes that they are dreaming, but still continues to dream. During lucid dreams, the dreamer feels as if they can control what happens. Individuals guess the length of their dreams, and they can be widely different. Or you could get sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is a lot like lucid dreaming, because you're aware that you're dreaming, but in the dream you're frozen in place. Sometimes you can see a shadowy figure in the corner of your eye. They could be familiar to you, like friends or family, which makes it even worse. So it's also a lot like nightmares. Whenever sleep paralysis occurs, the best thing you can do is regain control of your body. And to do this, you need to try to focus your on your toes and wiggle them. Once they start moving, the rest of your body should start to unlock. People can often remember their dreams somehow, even if it's tiny parts. Children are more likely to remember their dreams, and people will remember dreams better if they write them down after they wake up. This is rare, but some dreams can exceed to be over 1,000 words spoken. Although about 90% of these reports say that the average dream is fewer than 150 words spoken. But additional studies have proven that about a third of such reports are longer than 300 words. But some dreams aren't as pleasant. These are called nightmares. Nightmares are dreams that scare or shock you. They are enjoyable and they're usually based on someone's fears. Sometimes you're running from an imaginary monster, but other times you may experience more realistic nightmares, like fires drowning or even waking up late on the day of a test or a dance rehearsal. This proves that nightmares can widely vary. So in all, dreams are an important part of your life. This is how to survive a shark attack. If an attack is imminent, aim for the shark's eyes. They are the weakest point in a shark's body. The gill rakers are also a vulnerable area as well as the snap. Playing dead does not work with the sharks. If bitten, defend yourself as aggressively as you can. Also, get on land as soon as possible. Sometimes a shark will think you're a seal or a fish, then try to attack you. But it rarely will happen. Move slowly towards the shore or a boat. Choose whichever is the closest. Do not thrash your arms or kick or splash while you swim. Check turtles or other fish to see if they freak out. If so, then some big toothy beast is coming. Do not turn your back to the shark as you move. Experts say the best thing to do is swim slowly and keep eye contact with the shark. Do not block the shark's path. If you're standing between the shark and an open ocean, move away. Stay calm. Keep eye contact. Show them you're a predator. If the shark approaches, push it away. But you do not want to start a fight because you will lose. You should defend yourself if a shark looks aggressive. In that case, hit its nose, eyes, or its gill openings. Sharks prefer to avoid dolphins. Dolphins are mammals that live in pods and are very clever. They know how to protect themselves when they see an aggressive shark. They immediately attack it with the whole pod. So if you see dolphins while you're swimming away, try to swim towards them. Yellow, white, and silver seem to attract a shark. Many divers think that clothing... Fins and tanks should be painted in dull colors to avoid shark attacks. Blood. Through blood itself may not attract sharks. Its presence combined with the other unusual factors will excite animals and make them more prone to attack. Like dogs, sharks respect assertiveness. Do not turn your back on the shark as you move. If a shark is zigzagging, then it is looking for areas to attack you. Back up to a reef so it cannot do that. And that's how you survive a shark attack. Conclusions. Stay away in the first place. Have you ever wondered how animals survive in the desert? Yes, actually I have. First of all, you need to know what skills these animals use to survive in the desert. They can serve, recycle, and manufacture water. For example, boars, they breed during the winter when it is cool and migrate to cooler areas when it is summer in the desert. Other animals, such as reptiles and mammals, are only active at night and when it is cooler. 
As a twine for this is not twiner, small animals burrow deep underground during the summer to keep cool. A few desert animals enter a state of estivation when the days become too hot and the vegetation becomes too dry. In other words, they sleep through the warmest days in the desert. Desert toes burrow deep underground to and wait until it rains to get water. They can breed, lay eggs, and replenish their skin to go underground in another long period of time, and some arthropods can survive as eggs only hatch in summer or when it is raining in winter. Some animals, such as owls, keep their mouths open while rapidly fluttering their throat region to evaporate water from their surroundings. Vertebrates are able to orbit water from three sources. One, free water. Two, moisture contained in food. Three, mineralic water formed during the Process of cellular reputation. Many desert animals have adapted longer appendages to dissipate heat into their environment or habitat. I think it is amazing how desert animals manage to survive in such hot. Yes, indeed. I do think it is amazing, too. A book is made up of pages that are usually enclosed in a protective cover. People have written books all about all kinds of subjects. Among countless types of books are novels, picture books, cookbooks, how-to books, poetry books, and textbooks. How are books made? The first step is creating a book is for an author to write a manuscript. The next step is the manuscript goes to a designer and the designer makes the book look nice and makes it the cover. Most book pages are printed on one long roll of paper after printing. The paper is full, cut and arranged in two bundles of pages called signatures. Today, books are published in every language. Personal computers have allowed people to publish their own books. Just remember, stay tuned for the next episode. Make sure to follow this awesome podcast, but not just by hitting, but smashing that subscribe button. Please don't break your screen.